Hi, my name is Nathan Peterson and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Today I wanted to talk about social anxiety and how we treat it. Before we jump into all that, are you new to my channel? If you are, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be posting videos weekly on different mental health issues. So what is social anxiety? The title of social anxiety kind of gives it away. It's where an individual will feel anxious socially. So when they are out and about, even if they're not even talking, they can feel anxious. Somebody can go to school, they'll feel anxious. They can be at home, they can feel anxious. Be at the dinner table. Even people they're comfortable with, they still feel anxious. Some triggering symptoms for social anxiety are being introduced to other people, being teased or criticized, being the center of attention, being watched or observed doing something, having to say something in a formal or even public situation. I think a lot of us feel anxious in that. Meeting people of authority, just the feeling of being out of place in a social situation. Somebody who might get embarrassed or shake easily. Sometimes just keeping eye contact with somebody. Social anxiety can even manifest itself in many different ways. It could be somebody swallowing or even writing the sound that their pen makes on the paper. Eating ice, eating anything. Hopefully they don't make that sound. A lot of individuals have a difficult time making phone calls. Thank goodness for texting, but wait, did texting make this situation worse? Individuals with social anxiety tend to notice others' emotions easier. They will notice tones of voice. They will notice the wrinkle you have on your forehead when you talk to them. They'll notice where your eyes are looking. They'll notice how you are because they need to interpret what that means. I feel anxious because I don't know what that person's thinking about me. I don't know if what I just said was dumb. I don't know if people are judging me because of that. The comment that came out of my mouth wasn't relevant to the conversation. What are people thinking? A lot of individuals will do some avoidance behaviors. You know what? If I don't have to go out, I'm not even going to feel anxious about it. So why would I go out? If I'm invited to go to some event, my brain's already scheming. It's already thinking. It's about already wondering what is going to happen while I'm there. Am I going to meet somebody? Am I going to be stuck in the corner? And the brain's gonna start come up with, coming up with different ideas to keep you safe. It's gonna say, pull out your phone, look really busy, because guess what, if you're on your phone, no one's gonna talk to you. Maybe you can act like you're on a phone call. That'd be even better, because then you could leave the situation a little bit easier. Phones have definitely become a big motivator in keeping social anxiety alive. So where does social anxiety come from? We know that genetics tends to play a part in this, that Family members can have social anxiety, they can have generalized anxiety where they just don't know where the anxiety comes from. They can also have OCD, they can have depression. We know that there's some mental illness that probably has gone down the line. And the older generations didn't talk about it. At least most of them didn't. They don't want to talk about what they're experiencing. They just know that, let's say they had social anxiety, they know that they kept themselves safe by not having to communicate with others. They made it this far. As we know, genetics does play that part, but also it's a learned behavior as well. So let me give you an example. If I started off my school year, school starting soon, and I sat in the very, very, very back, and every single day I came in, I have my phone with me and I'm looking down on my phone and there's students piling in and they're looking at each other and they're talking, but I'm the only one on my phone like this. That I just completely avoided contact with other people. I said, I'm busy. I'm going to sit in the back to avoid talking. Even if that wasn't really my intention, that my brain's going to start learning over time that when I'm not communicating with others, it's going to be a little harder for me to do so in the future. And it's possible that when I do talk, I might have a poor experience. Someone says something rude or I might actually perceive it as rude. So my brain says, there you go. That's the reason you stay in the back. That's the reason you always have your phone out or you always have your earbuds in. Don't even risk having that happen again. I also don't want to blame phones as being the culprit to social anxiety. I know that there's so many different things that we can learn over time, and it's really behavior by behavior by behavior by behavior. Every little decision that we make is going to impact either social anxiety, our general life, happiness, even if we don't think it's a big deal. If I'm driving down the road and all of a sudden someone cuts me off, and I'm saying, wow, that person's very selfish. They didn't think about anyone else but themselves. And they didn't even use a turning signal. 
I just kind of started my day off with some negative thinking that actually is not even true. I don't know what that person did. All I know is they cut me off. I have no evidence to support that they're a jerk. I have no evidence to support that they are selfish. I do have evidence to support they didn't use that turning signal, but that doesn't define everything. So my brain kind of just learned there that people are not great. That people make bad decisions. They do things to hurt us. When really I didn't take the time to actually challenge my own thinking. To say, hey, what if that person's headed to the hospital for some reason? What if they're a brand new driver and they accidentally cut me off and they're so sorry for it, but they can't see him in the car and so, but I'm just perceiving all these thoughts about them. So what is the treatment for social anxiety? Obviously, if you have children, don't protect. Allow them to do scary things. Make them talk. Let them fail. Let bad things happen. Also, if you have a family with multiple siblings, pay attention to if one is talking for the other. It is actually very common in families where someone might say, hey, how old are you? And the older brother says, oh, she's three. Yes, that's such a small little interaction, but guess what? That three-year-old just learned, hey, someone's kind of talking for me and that's great. They're actually going to learn possibly to develop some social anxiety over time. If you are the individual yourself with social anxiety, challenge yourself, allow yourself to get out, know that things aren't going to be great at all times. Most of the time it is, but know that perception is the killer here, not social anxiety. We've got to understand that the way we're thinking about things and people and situations to know if they are actually true or if they're false. So two types of treatment that I typically use. One of them is called perceptual retraining. We've got to understand the different types of thinking errors that somebody might have, such as jumping to conclusions or magnifying a situation. And we have to determine if that thought is true or false. And the good way that I do this is say, pretend you are standing in front of Judge Judy and that thought that you just had needs to be true. So how are you gonna defend yourself? What are you gonna say? Okay, well, that person's judging me because I feel like that's true. What do you think she's gonna say? She's gonna laugh us right out of the courtroom. She, feeling is not fact. Feelings are important. We don't wanna disregard feelings, but we also wanna say, you know what? I have no evidence to support my own thinking right now. Or I might have little evidence, but a little evidence doesn't mean exactly what my brain is saying. So if I said, I'm jumping to conclusions about this, I need to determine what's another alternative, what's another scenario. My brain is saying, if I go to that party, people are gonna to talk to me and I'm gonna feel anxious about it. I'm gonna feel awkward and I'm gonna be awkward. And we're gonna say, wait a second, I don't know that. I haven't been there. It could be true, it could not be true, but I have no evidence to support it. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna make it purposeful. I'm not gonna go there and be on my phone because then I just already told myself how it's gonna be. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna risk that I possibly might make a mistake. I might sound weird, people might judge me. But unless someone says, ha ha, I'm judging you, we don't know any different. We're not gonna feel it, we're not gonna think it, and if we feel it, we need to challenge it. One situation going out isn't gonna change everything. It needs to be a mindset. It needs to be something that you are thinking about every day, every situation that you're going into. Do I want to pull out my phone right now just because I wanna be on it? Or do I wanna pull out my phone because I want to avoid talking to this person over here? If I wanna avoid talking to this person over here, I better put my phone away and not even like look away from them, but make sure I'm looking in their general direction. I'm gonna risk that that person's gonna to talk to me and almost be excited if they do. Make it almost a game if you can. Another aspect, which I've kind of already talked about, is exposure and response prevention. I want somebody to get out there and expose themselves to these situations on purpose. Think of building a hierarchy. What's a small step you could start with? And then build, and then build, and then build, and then build. That somebody might say, I have a really hard time just keeping eye contact with people. So I'm gonna go to a grocery store and I'm just gonna look at every single person. Not awkwardly, but I'm gonna look at every person. And I, I don't even have to say hi yet. That's all I'm gonna do is just look at every single person. And that is my goal every time I'm in public. Until that really is kind of boring for me. And then after I'm done doing that, I'm like, if someone happens to look back, how about I say hi? That might be a second step. That if, some, if I say hi and all of a sudden I feel like people are judging, I'm like, wait a second, go back to the first part of the treatment 
perceptual retraining, how can I prove that that person is judging me? How can I prove that even the feeling that I have is true? That's called emotional reasoning. Just because we feel a certain way doesn't actually mean it's true. But our body and our brain say that it's true. So it's kind of a two-parter. Expose yourself to the upsetting situation and challenge your own thinking. Make this a lifestyle. Make it a game that you are doing. I will create a whole separate video exactly every little aspect of this treatment, but a good place to start is find all the things that you're doing to avoid. Put those away. Risk. It's not gonna feel great. That's just the truth of it. At the beginning, it's not gonna feel great. But there's gonna be a point where you are seeking that attention from other people. If other people judge, they judge. If they don't, they don't. We're leaving it uncertain. We're not gonna figure it out. Medication can be helpful. I do like individuals to try the treatment as well. That way they're not just counting on this medication to help. So my question for you, do you have social anxiety? What things do you find that you are doing to avoid people or places or things? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you forward this on to your friends, to your family, anyone that could use this kind of help. And thank you again.